Hi, my name is Jacob Allen. I'm with Ketotherm Solutions. Today we're going to walk you through the process of how to update or bootload your controller. If you want to take advantage of the most recent features and capabilities, you'll have to upgrade to the newest firmware version. Also, if you have different controllers that we're attempting to bond and they are on different firmware versions, we will need to upgrade to the latest firmware version. If your controller was purchased prior to 2014 and you're trying to take advantage of the most recent features and capabilities, our best recommendation is to replace the controller entirely. Old hardware and new firmware is not compatible. Patricia is now going to walk you through the process of how to update or bootload your controller. We're going to go through the process for bootloading firmware from version 4.0, which are the older green screens that look like this. And you may also have green LEDs on your controller. Um, and we'll be showing blue. This is really doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It's just a newer controller. Um, if you're already using newer firmware with the black and white screens that look like this, then you should see video 160. The process is the same, but it'll probably just be easier for you to follow if your screens look the same as those in the video. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to bootload a controller firmware on a key to Eve app. But keep in mind, it's the same procedure for Ketotherm's other ethernet-based controllers. So just be sure to select the appropriate firmware for your device. To get started, you're gonna need the controller you wanna update, a 110 or 220 volt power source, a computer, and an ethernet cable. Then go to the Ketotherm website at ketotherm.com, hover over resources, then click on software updates, or you can use the link that I've included below in the video description to get to that same page. Download the file for the controller, and while you're on this page, you can also click on the instructions button and then uh, download a PDF of the process. The document contains information on connecting through a switch, an edge, edge manager, or smart gate that we're not gonna cover in the video. So this could be helpful. Okay, so on my computer, the files are set to automatically download to the downloads folder. So find that folder on your computer and right click the zip folder, then select extract all and you can save to your preferred location. I like the desktop because the folder is just easier to find. Open the extracted folder and verify that you see this icon. Now, determine your connection method. When bootloading from a PC, we do not want to be connected via Wi-Fi. So you should be hardwired to the same network or connected directly to the controller with an ethernet cable. If directly connected, you'll need to set a static IP address on the PC. And we do have a YouTube video that covers how to do this. And I've, again, placed that link below in the video description. Most controllers are already installed in the system when they're bootloaded. However, if you're plugging the controller into an outlet, you'll need to verify that the voltage jumper is set to 120. Then attach the power connector to the controller and plug the other end of the power cord into the wall socket. Now, check where you plugged in the Ethernet cable and confirm that the network link light is active on your PC. Once that's all good to go, note the IP address on the back of the controller. But remember, if the IP address was previously changed, the controller's current address must be used. You can verify this from the front panel. So use the right arrow to find the variables menu. Press the up arrow 10 times to get to the first octet of the IP address and it will be broken down into four sections. The first set of one to three numbers are the first segment of the IP and so on. There are four segments or octets total. Once you have the IP, open a web browser on your computer and enter the IP in the address bar. This will bring up the main page of the controller. To quickly reprogram the controller after bootloading the new firmware, we recommend snapping a screenshot of the controller's current set points and settings. So there's a few ways to do this. You can press the Alt plus Print screen keys on the keyboard, or use the snipping tool and paste the images in a Word document, or you can just snap some pictures or video with your phone. Just be sure to capture all the information that you want before continuing. So then click Login. Then on the login page, enter the username and password. 
The factory default is key2admin, key2admin. If the password has been changed from the default, you'll need to use those new credentials. Click the Enter or Submit button. We're now back on the Settings page. Look at the upper right-hand corner of the page for the current firmware version. Click the Bootloader button. If a verification button pops up, click OK. Now the controller is in bootloader mode and BTLM is displayed on the front of the controller. From the folder that you created in the preliminary steps, double click the application file to launch the bootloader program. Click Run Anyway. Confirm that the bootloader program has located the controller at the controller's pre-configured IP address. At this point, you could be hit with one or more messages. If you receive a message from your PC's firewall, make sure you allow it. If you receive a message that no controllers are in bootloader mode, manually enter the IP address on the right-hand side and click Connect. And if you're asked to run code now in the pop-up box, select No. Okay, now select Program and then Program again. Once the programming process has completed, click OK. You'll now see another message telling you congratulations, so you can click OK again. Refresh the web browser for the controller's web page. So due to browser caching, you may need to start a new browser session or use incognito or private mode to load the web page correctly. Okay, so notice that the look and organization of the information is very different. And after bootloading, the controller is now in intro mode and is reverted to the factory default settings. So you can use the screenshots you collected earlier to change any set points to your custom values. Go to the hamburger icon, scroll down to set points, and make your changes. Or if the defaults are fine, just go ahead and click save. The controller will now begin operating. For security, the password must be changed from the default the first time you log in. Once you've changed the password, you can log in using key to admin and the new password you just created. Okay, this is important. Due to security improvements in version 5.0 and newer, your browser will likely display a privacy or security warning when first connecting to the controller via its IP address. So confirm the IP address of the controller is correct, and then you can proceed. Depending on the browser, you'll click Advanced or Show Details, then Proceed to, Accept Risk, or Continue to, or Visit this website. And this will continue and bring you to the controller's web page. It's not generally advisable to click past this warning. However, proceeding past this warning when you're connecting to the controller is safe. That's it. You can now take advantage of the new feature and capabilities with the newest firmware version. If you have any additional questions, give us a call on our technical support line. Thank you.